What is going on? Uh oh. Welcome back. We're Episode back. Episode five, yeah. baby. Let's go. Right. We got our Capri Suns. Oh, yeah. Wild Cherry Waterfall. We're sipping <sighs> on that. Listen, listen. Some ASMR. Yeah. It's so good. It's delicious. Guys, Capri Sun is just banging. We're here tonight, though, to apologize. We are so sorry. We missed another week. Hey, we're trying our we're, best. We're trying. We're trying. Here's what happened. We were actually a part of a production this we past were. week. Though it was small, it was mighty. Mm. It it's was good. Youth Retreat Day, mm -hmm. which was a single day event. Yeah. And uh, worship was all acoustic, mm -hmm. had games, had fun. Oh, yeah. Two messages. It was a fun day. But what did that setup look like, Tanner? Yeah. So basically it was – so Pastor Adam came to me. He's like, we want to do acoustic things. So quick – I was going to say synopsis. That's not it. Synopsis recap. Okay, <laughs> synopsis. Quick, re <laughs> quick recap. It was supposed to happen um, – at a camp in West Virginia, I right? Think it was. Yeah, um, um, Gore, Virginia. Gore, Vir oh yeah, Gore, Virginia. So just normal Virginia. Um, with the amount of kids that were going to attend that, we decided that it would be more beneficial to do a free one-day event here at the church mm -hmm. to allow more students to come. You know, more life change. Which they did. We had uh, double the number, like over double the number. I think it was almost triple, actually. Really? Yeah. Wow. So it was it was really cool to see how God worked in that way. Um, one thing that Katie said was like that you know that was His A plan the whole time. Yeah, like no matter true. what we planned, like God knew exactly it's what was going to happen. Well, let me do it. Um, which was super cool just to see the life change and the move of the Spirit happen in the students because of that one day thing was super cool. But the whole plan, even in Gore, Virginia, um, was to do this acoustic vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically. Lighting was real simple, and that was really the only thing we did. Audio-wise, right, we used our Nord. Mm -hmm. Quinn brought his cajon. I brought two guitars. Then the shaky egg. I had a shaky egg, too. Oh, yeah, the shaky egg. Can't forget <laughs> it. I used it for one song. <laughs> <laughs> you used the foot tambourine, too. I, heard. I did, yeah. I had the little tappy foot thing. Yeah. Um, I used it for one, and then I realized the pitch of it's really sharp. It was. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, uh, it's not the time. I heard it exact as soon as you started. I'm like, oh. And there, yeah, there was a part I got really excited. And I started doing it for chord notes. <laughs> and then we did the bridge again. So I had to keep that going. And it was like, I don't want this. Your no one wants like, this. <laughs> your yeah. calf is just seized up. So it's really bad. but That's hilarious. But yeah, brought two guitars, busted a string on one of them halfway through one set, swapped it out. You know, that was fun. That is, <laughs> that is why you bring. So I play in Eastman. Um, when I play acoustic and uh, I always bring uh, this little fender thing that I bought on marketplace for like yeah. 25 bucks. Right. Uh, it surprisingly sounds really, really good. It's got Fishman electronics and everything. Right. Um, but I always end up cause I play really like, I just get into it. I mm -hmm. always end up snapping a string in like those like long day or like multi night event stuff. Yeah. I always bring two acoustics. It's the worst to have to play like power chords when you snap the G string on an acoustic. Yeah. So, but yeah, audio was pretty basic. Lighting, that was, was cool. Lighting was fun. I loved those. Th there were boxes. Yeah. And there was like glass things. You can better describe yeah. it. What do you got? Light bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no um, so the fixtures that I brought in for this event were Jerag fives, um, oh. which. I was going to a company with the JRAG L's, mm -hmm. but because it was at the church, I stripped down budget wise and just kept the five. So basically it's a five by five cell blinder. So they stand about two and a half feet tall by two and a half feet wide. They're squares. They have 25 um, just light bulbs. And they individually program each light bulb. Individually right? program. So it has 25 channels. It's a 25 channel DMX profile. And, you know, we use those at work to like spell words out and yeah. stuff. And I was really bummed. So what I did, because we had our worship down in front of the stage, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I had two of them kind of pointed in towards the musicians on the outside, like on the ground with us. And then right behind us was the stage. So I elevated two of them, put them on the stage, 
kind of making this arc shape. Right. And then I stacked one up even higher on some boxes in the center. So well, they I were like apple them. crates, real vintage looking. Yeah, they were real, nice. real acoustic kind of vibe uh-huh. stuff. Um, so then I had this arc shaped uh, lighting and it was super cool. Now what I do, <laughs> I missed out. I could have spelled the word youth. Oh, yeah, yeah. You would or like had them go back back and forth between cla and youth that would be sick and i didn't think of it until like halfway through the day and i'm like shoot that would have been so cool <laughs> yeah. I, I really just wasn't thinking um but i mean basically no no harm no foul though no one yeah no one was expecting it and exactly so was nothing honestly nobody was expecting anything i think everybody was surprised when they walked in and saw new lights yeah i think I'm, i think the students were surprised to see an acoustic setup to mm. be honest because they they totally were you know like we They're do things camp yeah just like we do things hard. big, yeah. but that was Pastor Adam's whole vision was like, we're so used to the big at our church, which is like out of the ordinary. Yeah. Like we're used to the hazer and the the lights and the production. Um, and so he wanted to shake it up by going back to the basics. Yeah. Which I love. I love, yeah. love playing stri- like, w- like those acoustic sets. It's just such a vibe. We so did. Uh, yeah. We did. I thank God uh-huh. on the last day, or not the. La- it was one day. The yeah. last. <laughs> the last event. The last. Uh, yeah, service or whatever. And man, did the students get into it? We stopped singing completely. Yeah, for sure. Like, it, the kids carried the uh, for most of the song. Uh-huh. Kids carried it, and we just kind of jumped around. And you know, they're like eight inches from me. Right. Like they're just standing right there. That's the beauty. We were on the floor. We were with mm-hmm. them. Yep. We were worshiping. To be together. able to just worship with like with the students. Right. With the congregation is it's a really cool experience. I yeah. love it. Every time we do it. It's so. so cool. So planned I think God on a Cajon was a first time for me. How was that? It was it was weird because it's like it's a very like I want to say tonal song. You know what I mean? You use the toms and yeah that that's kind of what takes the song forward but uh-huh. when you have two tones <laughs> it's, it's really hard to like know what to do but it ended up working out and sounded good so. i thought it sounded great i just rode the bass whenever i got bored yeah <laughs> just literally like, just boom, boom, just pour in the floor <laughs> so but yeah no o- overall it, it really was a great weekend but that is why we were unable to record we were going to try and record it was it was saturday night yeah um we were wiped out and just just wiped and then for some stupid reason <laughs> decided to go to b dubs <laughs> afterwards we you had know, some chicken wings we filled up i slept good that night bro i slept great yeah showed up just like five minutes before second service mm-hmm. oh Ugh, so good. i love sundays when i get to do that it's rare when i get a sunday where i can sleep in right um, so when i do get it man it's man, good they're great they're great but that's why we were late that's why we apologize we're drinking our Capri Suns and we're saying we're sorry. So, tonight's event, however, yeah, we're talking about setting up, planning an event. Mm. Now we have different experiences in this. We do, Tanner. I kind of, I kind of know, like project management with mm-hmm. like setting up an install and and getting things ready so that when a production comes, they can use it when yeah. in like a permanent fixture. Yours, however, is more more re- live rental. Event yep yeah and and production like this is for this event yep and so i'm really interested on your takes and on our differing perspectives on yeah this. so yeah it's gonna be good <laughs> yeah i'm excited to talk about this um so essentially this is my full-time job the event planning mm-hmm. thing um that's really at the core of everything so like in our company uh at spirit we have you know we have our a1 we have our L1, you know, V1 or whatever. And, you know, we all we all work together, you know, project managers for live events, stage managers, mm-hmm. stage hands, whatever. Um, like our roles on a live event. But like, as you know, a live event is not the majority of our time. That's what we do. It's not right. the majority of our time spent. A lot of my time spent is at the shop or at the office, right? Building quotes, mm-hmm. you know, putting stuff out for people. Getting inventory um, ready. And getting, dude, so much inventory. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, but yeah, most of my job and I don't know if I've told the podcast this <gasps> breaking news. I'm moving to Texas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, it's really not that big news because everybody <laughs> knows, but I don't know if we've said it on the podcast. Yet. Yeah. Um, so going to Texas, I'll be 
transitioning to like a fully remote position. Mm-hmm. So that's the only thing I'll be doing is building quotes, um, mainly designing install systems. Right. Um, so l- less live event stuff, S- which is I'm sure still be some live events. Yeah. Does um, that bum you out? No, because I, I do enjoy doing it like installing or not installing but like engineering these systems and thinking of every little detail right. and planning it out so meticulously so like i, I love doing that right. stuff like i can like i will make drawings like crazy Man. and like you can look at it and just be like oh yeah this is perfect i know exactly what to do wow. like i love being super precise with a lot of that kind of stuff um and being able to take my time and just you know sit there and really design some awesome systems right um so I'm definitely excited. I will have to get my hands wet in Texas. It's like, I don't know, doing something. At wh- whether that's doing what I'm doing now with CLA, which is just serving, volunteering my mm-hmm. time, um, or getting like small part-time job as a TD somewhere. Yeah. Um, because at the end of the day, my passion is, you know, doing events, get right. my hands dirty, and I love it. Um, There's a lot of big churches down there. Dude, there's a lot of huge churches down there. Texas yeah. is, everything's bigger in Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> Yeehaw. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my job when it comes to live event planning, and by the way, we are talking like production wise. Obviously, mm-hmm. we're not. I have set up tables and chairs for events. But that's because I have no other choice. <laughs> right. Um, or like they asked us to do everything. We're like, okay, whatever. We'll bring in a company and do it. And then I end up just helping because uh-huh. uh, whatever. Um, but talking today more strictly about the production side. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what it, what I do. Yeah. Quinn, give us a little, little take on what the project management side of that. For sure. For sure. Before we dive into that though, I just want to say we made that big announcement. And so I want, I want to answer the the elephant in the room. What does that mean for the podcast? Oh, what does it mean? What does it mean? Guys, we have a plan. We do. Listen, we do not worry. We will. We will. About a thing. Continue the podcast. Every little thing. Yes. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. (laughs) We're going to continue it on. We're going to do calling. We're going to record it. And we're going to have great times figuring it out. It's going to be great. I'm Um, speaking so broadly because we're still planning on the full system of it. Yeah. But we'll essentially be recording with each other remotely. And then the audio quality should not go down at all. Don't worry. Um, the the belief is thing. to keep it the same. Also, every little thing. hopefully it's going to be all right. Yes. Um, hopefully some mic upgrades soon. Oh, Fingers crossed. We go. already got our new mic stands <laughs> after week one. So yes. we're here making big upgrades. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, stay tuned for that. But. Yes, thank you for addressing the elephant in the room. The podcast will stay alive. Yes, um, we're alive. As long as you guys keep it alive and you keep showing your support at at Worship Production Podcast mm. on the Instagram. Let's go. Give it a follow. Give it a follow. Shoot us a DM. Smash that like button. Ask us a question. Come on. Come on now. Give yes. us some feedback. We love you guys. Thank you for listening. Yes, for real. Do send questions. We yes. want to know more. We do. We do. Okay, my role. Yeah. As Hit it. Uh, this is a newer role for me, actually, yeah. with the project management of installs, and um, I'm really excited to take it on because it's a beast, but it, it, it involves those details that you were mentioning, like thinking through every single step for when the installers get there. Mm-hmm. This is more in the logistical side of things. Yeah. It's It's, okay, do we have the entire packing list complete for the screen? All of the jumper cables, all of the data cables, all of the, pro- mm-hmm. you know, the processor, the screens, the extra modules, the extra part, like the data ports, everything. So we send like a package and we kind of got it down to a system at this point. Um, and it's a team event, really. Uh, we have a warehouse manager that kind of oversees that side of things. Um, but he works closely with the project managers to to make sure that everything is in order for this install. Um, if they need a ladder, what kind of electric do they have? This is something you have to think about, you know, 120, mm-hmm. 220. Um, and where is that electric? Yep. Our, data li- our data lines run yeah. for the screen to the booth. Um, where they're you know running the content is the screen 
or the processor behind the screen or is it in the sound booth you know all of these different details that you work out just to make sure that this install goes flawlessly yep. and that the church is happy when we leave or yep. or the school or wherever we're working um so there's a lot of details that that you just have to run through and really think through um, as a project manager so that when the installers get there they can just do their job yep, like exactly. they've done it a hundred times before yep. so you're kind of driving around the bumps so that they can you know already know the path that it, they have to walk around yeah. it. um but it's fun because we have like a sales team that really puts together the quotes and they they kind of build the screens with the churches mm-hmm. they they're the ones that put the vision together for what the screen's going to look like and so as the project manager, excuse me, as the project manager, one of your roles is to just like use what you're given and it's like, okay, this is what I have. Like uh, yeah. the, the creative side is kind of used earlier on in our process. Mm-hmm. Um, and so ours is, okay, this is what I have. How can I make this physically happen? And yeah. that's, that's what I really like. Uh-huh. Um, Cause w- where one thing is the visioneering and like, you know, the thinking about it we're the pms are almost the the engineers like we're 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 taking the dream and making it reality you know so it and like what what kind of trussing do you use is this being flown ground stack wall mount like and all the all of those little details that go with it so it's a lot to think about but it's it's very fun especially when you have a church that's just so excited for their new screen you know it's it's it just makes it so much better Mm -hmm. yeah no it was really cool kind of hearing that side of it from a video wall like strictly video wall company like i can apply so i've built a ton of video wall quotes right yeah and they're all a little different typically i i mean i quote almost exclusively refresh panels at this point really yeah i quoted a couple thor walls at one point Fully. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Quinn's like kicking me in the shin right now. Um, but no, I, I do really quote m- mostly refresh walls. Um, but uh, yeah, hearing that and then like kind of, you know, comparing to what I do, mm-hmm. like not saying you like it's what you guys are doing is easier. But like no, no. when I think of like. <laughs> Right. We focus on we're a production, a Navy company as a whole. Right. So like it's everything. It's everything. There's a lot more. Detail. So like, hey, we need audio lines. We need right. video. We need, you know, lighting. And they'll ask us for this quote mm-hmm. with a video wall. And yeah. it's like, oh, my gosh. And then we're and yeah. then like putting all the pieces together. And yeah. it's so much fun because essentially it's problem. So I love problem solving especially like on site when things go wrong. Like I love finding solutions to do that, but I also like problem solving in the creative, like beginning side of it right. where it's like, all right, how can I fit these pieces? What, what piece of gear can I put here? That's actually going to help me with yeah. this piece of gear that I'm going to use here. That's fun. It's and like, like, like how puzzle together. exactly. And it's cool because like at the, at that initial stage, I have unlimited resources. You're right. I just like, Oh, if I want something that has, you know, a great company called Alona, um a t l o n a did i stutter a t l o n a at lona um they have these super cool like switchers and stuff like that so this one project they had a couple different inputs and outputs and i needed like i forget exactly what it was but i needed like one hd base t input with like a couple HDMI inputs, but only two HD base T outputs. I didn't need any local HDMI mm-hmm. outputs. Right. And I like it took me hours of searching. I could not find anything with multiple HD base T outputs. So right. it's that kind of like problem solving where you're like, okay, how can I, what switch can I most effectively use in this situation? Like what piece of gear can I use most effectively in this yeah. situation? And then just like you're finding something that works great at Lona. If you guys need cool switches, they've got just about everything under the sun. Man. They are, they're crazy. Um, wow. But yeah, no, I, I really do. That's awesome. L- yeah. Enjoy the, the planning of the installation. Yeah, but for sure. Yeah. With us, I know, like you said, there we have one thing to worry about and I feel like that gives us room, enough consistency that we can create a process. Yes. Whereas yours, there is no process. We, Everything is kind of... We've tried to make unique. a process, and it's just so difficult because every church 
it, the situation is just so right. vastly different in every every time. Yeah. It's like you just have to have somebody just, you know, yeah. they take the time to design a unique system for that church. Whether or not, you know, we get that bid is right up to the church, but we, we take that time to create that. But, no, what, what would totally be cool in you guys' stances, Nick? You know, like you right. have your – design guys be like oh yeah like let's do 120 foot wide uh-huh. 60 feet tall like this is gonna be <laughs> epic right and right. then they're like pass it down to you guys and you guys you know like all right split this many panels i need this many jumpers uh-huh. i want this kind of trust because it's this tall oh we're flying great i need yep. you know load bars that like are rated for this amount mm-hmm. and whatnot so like having yeah. that process would be sweet and yeah. i bet that allows you guys to just like oh pump out we're jobs. a machine i yeah. mean we'll have Sometimes in the warehouse, like in a busy season, we'll have eight jobs in a week, you know, like all being pumped out the door. Like I'm talking like 60 panel jobs. You and know that's what I mean? just crazy. And it's just, yeah. And and we have the capacity and the workload to, to be able to do that. And yeah. so we've really ironed out our process and yeah. it's, it's been nice. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's so cool. I mean, we're, so I'd say about this point, we are in a busy season for installations right now, which is kind of interesting. Um, I would say we've probably been, you know, an installation a week. Really? Yeah. yeah. Recently, which is a wow. lot for us. Typically, yeah, we'll go good. weeks with just a drought. Not mm-hmm. ma- not because jobs aren't closing, right. but because we don't have gear. Yeah. Because we don't, like, our inventory systems work totally different because we order when jobs sell. Right. So then you have to wait for mm-hmm. manufacturers to ship and all this stuff and the shipping delays. And we're still waiting on jobs. It's been, uh, we have a couple jobs that I'm sure have been waiting over a year. Just wow, short like microphone stuff not coming in, uh, whether wow. that's Alan and he stuff not coming in, like just stuff is back ordered. Is this part of that like since COVID it's been back ordered? Or is it? Are we kind of past that at this point? We're I mean we're past the COVID thing, but maybe effects of COVID. I'm not exactly sure. Just yeah, just ma- say, honestly, right? just manufacturing. I know the chip shortage last year or mm-hmm. two years ago was pretty that. bad. We're still feeling effects of from that. Um, but it, do you guys get shipments of? Like, or you guys don't buy panels when a job sells. You guys just have inventory we have, as often yeah, as you can. We have inventory. You should see our warehouse. We have a deck and then the floor. Mm-hmm. There's four docks on each level. And we have probably, well, we have triple stacks of road cases. Probably, I want to say, uh, probably 60 a dock. Like 60 a, a, a loading wow. dock. 60 road cases, which are 12 panel cases. So oh we have lands. just so many panels. Thousands of panels. We have so oh. many panels on, on standby. Mm-hmm. And um, it's really cool because we have uh, like this huge stack of VX1000 processors <laughs> that are just like ready to ship out. So like in a moment's notice, we could turn around a job in like a week and a half. And that's If someone so called cool. and we're re- ready to buy, you know, we could do it in a week and a half. Yeah. So that is like... That's cool cool. because you guys have recognized the demand for that market. Right. And you guys, right, it's not, like, obviously, it's a little risk, but you guys have identified that it's not that risky to just have inventory all the time. Where, like, if we were to just buy a bunch of inventory, we'd be sitting on it for being like, oh, I hope (laughs) this job closes so we can sell all this stuff. Right. Um, But, no, that's super cool. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. So, it's it's fun to, to see the warehouse kind of ebb and flow because sometimes we'll be really slim Mm -hmm. and and like when we're waiting for a shipment or like right before we get a shipment it's always like bare bones and then it just fills up again and so you see like it grow and like shrink and stuff so Mm -hmm. it's nice to see the inventories flowing like that yeah it's fun to watch how often do you guys get shipments in with panels um it it comes and goes i we just had these new LED trailers come in, so that was two shipments. Yeah. And actually, let's quick talk about those. <laughs> Just <laughs> oh, quick, yeah. we'll touch on them. Yeah, so they're LED walls that are built onto a trailer, like permanently mm-hmm. fixed. And the top row actually is on a hydraulic. Um, it flips up. It's it's faced the other way, but it flips up over the top and connects to the screen. Um, and then it raises up about 12 feet. So uh, it's it's really good for outdoor events and... I mean, it's a, uh, what is it? Probably six by 11, I think. Yeah, they're six and a half by 11. Yeah. I thought they were 16.9, but a 16.9 wall on a trail would be quite large. Yeah. But 
these hydraulics are crazy. I mean, they, they're so powerful Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it just does things like butter. Um, and then it's on a rotating like 360 degrees. Uh, you can rotate the screen any direction. Like one person can do it. That's so, it's so simple. Um, really, really good picture. Uh, 3.9 panels. Um, but it does the job and they're outdoor panels so it can rain or shine. Um, they have fixed speakers, but we're not going to talk about those. <laughs> fair enough. Fair we're enough. working on um, a better solution for the speakers because yeah. the ones that were sent are a little bit, they're they are high on the treble end. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, they're, they're sweet. The fact that a guy can set up a six and a half by 11 video wall in like, what, a couple minutes. Yeah, just to press of a button. Literally, you just drive up and you got a wall ready. Like the lab- the labor that's taken care of, um, which is huge. And we'll bring this. I'm gonna whip this back into live events. Huge in a live event standpoint. Like when you're planning for stuff like that, and you're planning. All right, mm-hmm. let's do. Like let's just take. Let's say, like in all of our scenarios that we're gonna talk about with live events, right? Let's say it's an outdoor concert. Creation. S- Let's say Creation Festival. Creation it's a Festival. Music festival. Yeah. Is Creation or Uprise the big one? Creation's, Creation's the, big the big one. one. Uprise the one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Let, let's say Creation Fest. So you're doing something outdoor. Now, obviously, six and a half by 11 wall is not going to cut it at Creation. Right. They're probably doing like 40 wides or something. Right. Just absolutely Bad example, stupid. I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> Maybe for the small stage. They yeah. Have, yeah they have let, a couple let, stages. Let's do something like just like an SL 100, which is like a 20 foot wide stage. Let's say it's just some summer thing. The city's putting on or something, right. you know, your yeah. local town is putting on a summer concert with some local bands and they're coming out and they want an led wall or two. Maybe they want iMag or something because mm-hmm. they're doing video. Right. To be able to plan for a live event and just put in the live event quote. Oh, yep. Just two. Yeah. Two, two walls. Oh, how much labor? None. Literally none. You just pull up. You set it up. Press the processor is already <laughs> configured and plugged in. Which you just, just need to plug in the power. Power and it's source. ready to go. Just plug in power in the source. Yeah. Play video games on it. Yeah. Can I rent one for my birthday party? <laughs> if you want, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> um, yeah. And we got four on standby, so it's like we're ready to go yeah, on we're the west coast, right? Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, we got two on the west coast, and we just got four here. You guys got four trucks here? I yeah. thought you only got two. We got four here, and one, one is swings. going to Florida. Okay. So we made a sale in Florida that that's going there. Nice. We have three for our own inventory to use for rentals and events. I might. I'm gonna see if I can try and sell one this summer. Yeah. That'd be cool. Just mainly just because I want to get hands on with it. Yeah. That'd be that'd be neat. That would be neat. It would be very fun. I mean, maybe you could do events down in Texas. Hey. Be I'm a trying. remote refresh worker too. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, you did not. Hear that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Um, but yeah, let's wrap this back to live events. Right. Because <laughs> it's the second time we're trying to whip it back. I'm sorry. <laughs> whip it back. No, we do this a lot, but it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. We. Yeah. I mean, that was a good conversation about installs and stuff, which we can talk on on another episode, dive a little more, a little deeper right. into that. Uh, yeah. Maybe after I'm in Texas and doing it more of that full time. That'd thing. be fun. Um, but yeah, planning for live events. That's more my realm. It sounds like more than more than Quinn's for sure. Um, so I guess I would just give you a little. I'll give you a quick rundown, Quinn. Yeah. On like how, how that process goes. Right. Yeah. I'm curious. And then well, you just like, let me know. To start this thing off, I'm just yeah. curious. Like, okay, I'm a church, right? Mm-hmm. I have this live event. Do I just tell you about the live event, and like maybe a little bit of the vision that I have, and then you just run with it? And like, how do you put it together? You s- you said that it comes together like a puzzle. Like, what's your personal process without giving away too much yeah, yeah, yeah. competition or anything. so no, uh, <laughs> I, everything i'm saying is confident no, okay. um so the puzzle thing is definitely more on like the install side like because you're picking like again like i said you have unlimited resources mm-hmm. you haven't bought anything yet you're just sourcing stuff um obviously with live events we are using all of our inventory spirit has a very nice inventory of gear audio lighting video Right. So, really, we can do just about whatever uh, a client asks for. So, right in your scenario, church, let's say a church, well, I'll use CLA as an example. Well, maybe sure. I shouldn't because I don't know if that event is, no, I'm not going to do that because I don't know if that oh event's released yet. Yeah, I don't know if they've talked about it. Forget I said that. Um, 
Church A <laughs> wants to do. If we could do spirit nights at the youth group. Is that too small of an event? Yeah, yeah, that's too small. So let, let's say something church outdoor. A. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Church, 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 church A, a outdoor wants event. to do an outdoor event in the summer. They want to do a worship night with their whole church. Um, and so they come to us and they'd be like, hey, we want to do this event. Um, it's on, right, like whatever, June 49th, right? June 49th, um, yeah. So At they come to us. PM. at 360 p.m so they come to us right you know give us dates times whatever that that stuff is important um it, it is important when quoting because we also have to look at like what else is going on like right. i know we just we were talking about it today we have a couple weekends in july where we've got four or five live events happen same day we're like all right we got a crew of five guys mm. how are we doing this like like let's so that's the biggest thing with live events is like where's labor right that that that's another big part of the live event coordination stuff um but yeah they come they say all right we want we want to do this outdoor concert worship stuff this is what our band looks like right we got two guitars acoustic keys drums right. bass oh, pretty simple we want four vocals yeah we need to know you know band plot mm-hmm. um all that stuff because we not that we'd provide back line uh we can yeah but we don't often that's not our business so, so do you decide do you decide where they'll be on stage or do they kind of nope, like they'll, decide they'll give us their band plot so basically it's oh a plot. Piece okay of, that's yep, what you said stage plot and it has you know drummer here uh-huh. do they want a drum riser you know right what's their kit look like is it a three tom is it two tom mm-hmm. what's you know are they running three snares i don't know right. i just saw a video on instagram the other day is this worship guy running like three snares huh. I'm like hey you like a piccolo you. and like a no like idea deeper i'm not a drum guy I just huh. those three <laughs> snares i'm like that looks weird but um so like they'll give us their plot you know i've done a couple of these live events where it's like they've got like three keys oh Um, yeah so we we got to do um a thing for andy minio when he was at uprise and andy minio's guy had two keyboards and then a moog synth (sighs) just left oh man did it bring the mood it it was it was awesome yeah (laughs) i loved it but you know They'll give us their plot for what they want that to look like. They say, all right, we are expecting 500 people, right? That gives us a really good range of the scale of the event. Right. Um, so, you know, are the, is there going to be 4,000 people? Are we packing out a field? All right. In which case we need like a big, maybe we're doing some big like 35. I think it's, I, I don't know the mobile stage part numbers too well, right. but maybe we're getting like a 35 foot wide mobile stage where we come park a trailer in dump it that thing turns into a stage we fly a light mm-hmm. rig we fly pa um and then basically from there they're just like all right yeah we want we want cool lights we want some moving stuff you know stuff and faces or they're like you know maybe like with cla they're like hey we want something more ambient we want this kind of feel right. that's what most people like especially churches are like hey this is the feel we want this is about the size here dates some logistics mm. you guys give us a quote that will do that and we'll love it. So we have this creative design. Um, so that's free reign, or l- like oh. in a sense. Oh yeah, for the most Keep part. Keep it in the like it, it's bowling with bumpers. Exactly. Yep. It's all right. Here's my inventory. What do I want to use? Yeah. And I'm the lighting guy, so I'm 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 the L one for us. So I design lots of our lighting rigs. So I you know every event I try to spice it up. Right. right. I'm, I'm doing deck packages. I for the longest time I would just do poles because you know that's kind of what I. I was learning and just doing straight up poles and now I'm like, you know, building some cool truss arches, building like wings and stuff, like cool designs on mm, stage with stuff, fun. putting lights on them, you know, right. buying new lights. <laughs> Ryan yeah. probably hates me at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, using the new lights that we buy and trying to incorporate them as much as I can and do different things and cool. Um, so that's a lot of fun. I enjoy that. Um, yeah. Gavin typically does most of our live event audio stuff. Uh, so he'll design the audio rig, uh, set it over. I'll design the lighting rig uh, and or video. You know, not a ton of people ask for video for their live events. Um, and if it is, it's strictly video. Right. They're like, hey, we want to do a live event for our conference. And yeah. then we'll, you know, bring some cameras, bring some switchers, stuff like that. Uh, make it a good time. So, Interesting. but yeah. And then, you know, you'll have clients that say, hey, we want, you know, we want five moving heads. They better be better because, like, we'll have 
um, it was the city of Dauphin County sent in a quote or whatever. Um, and they were like specific. They're like, all right, Ooh. we need a cut. So it's, it's a rider basically. Okay. Um, and they'll give us a rider and we have to meet those specs. Wow. So, Hey, we want a console that is no less than this. These brand names mm. has this many inputs. Wow. Uh, we want lights, um, you yeah. know, these brand names, no less than these wattages. Like we want RGB, like all of this stuff. Wow. And like, you just have to like pick their p- rider apart and be like, all right, here's what we have. Here's what we can use. And, you know, try to do the best you can. Um, yeah. So there's definitely like two, two kinds of clients. There's right. some in between stuff, but it's, you typically see it's either, okay, we want this. This is what we want. Quote us this. And Hey, we're putting on this event. This is kind of the vibe. Like, yeah. Let's go. Um, we do a lot of events for the city of Harrisburg. Um, I'll use Capona Festival as an example. Okay. They're like, hey, we have a bunch of local acts. It's a four day. It's a four day festival, live music, all day long. Right. And it's, hey, build a cool lighting package for us. Make the audio sound good. And make we'll sure there's happy. a roof over their head. Yeah. And we'll be happy. They don't care what we use. So we sure. have fun with it, right? We bring out you know a mobile stage. Or we build a stage roof. Uh, bring out you know different pas every year and yeah. have fun with that l- cool lighting designs and that's fun that's that's probably a fun field to kind of experiment gear that you wouldn't get to maybe sometimes yes i love it yeah yep and you know if if i'm like dying for something you know sub rent it from another company right they got main light down the road they got everything you could possibly <laughs> imagine um so no i i love live events um not just the event planning and planning you know how that event's gonna happen but like running the event like there is no better feeling than showing up to a riverside music festival on my little my little honda grom at seven in the morning doing some mic checks with some friendly local bands and just sitting back running some lighting like eating some good food truck food Mm -hmm. sitting there out beautiful weather listening to music all day like the fact that i get paid to do that still boggles my mind yeah Uh, and i'm definitely going to miss that the most when i go to texas um is being able to do stuff like that and yeah kind of road how far is spirits like reach typically so in a live event or install capacity um well hit both very different okay so our live event stuff i did a worship night in georgia uh we've done worship nights in florida um, so you ride the East Coast kind of? Pretty much just the East Coast. Now, both of those, we were following a group um, that does worship nights locally, and they decided to go down there, so we followed them for that. Um, but that's not like a, a normal day. N- definitely not normal. Um, probably Central PA, you know, do some stuff in Baltimore. Yeah. Um, do some stuff in New York. Which there's a lot of demand in this area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It plenty of cities in this Lots of big cities yeah. within like six hours of here. Um, so there's definitely a big demand, which is cool, but nothing too far outside. Now install, we've gone to Missouri for installs, oh, yeah. um, Ohio for installs. We've gone l- literally uh, all the surrounding states, wow. um, up and down the East coast. So that's that that's definitely an easier reach because, you know, when a live event wants something from us, well, I'll just say in period. Well, oh, we've done live events in Kentucky oh, as wow. well. Uh, we followed a group called Barn Smoker. They're a cigar company. Oh, wow. Uh, super cool. Fun guys. Yeah. The events are awesome. Were they, they actually like a had band? Mat- well, or? no, no. So Barn Smoker, they have this like cover band basically come play okay, every okay. time. So it's just an event. They have a bunch of people just come. They pay a ton of money for tickets. Come hang out, smoke cigars. There's a giant casino and a band plays all night. But obviously we do the production side. So we do the lighting. We do all that for the band and stuff. Wow. Um, but the last event we were at in Kentucky, Metallica actually came. No way. Yeah. Because they released a M81 cigar, I think it's called. So <laughs> Metallica and Barn Smoker came together and made some guitar. So like members of Metallica were there, I guess. I didn't. I'm not a huge Metallica <laughs> fan. I had no idea. Wow. Um, wow. But I know a couple of them were there and they were like hanging out. Or I think the the manager of Metallica or something like sang with a cover band. Oh, wow. not exactly sure. Cause I don't know who any of them are. That's really um, cool though. But it, it was really cool. It was a huge stage, huge mobile stage that we actually sourced from a guy so in a Nashville. Oh, massive, wow. massive. And it takes place in a tobacco field. Like they, <laughs> they have them at tobacco farms. 
I guess that's smart. That's and good marketing. Yeah, so night one, basically, is just this giant party. Night two, it's literally a tobacco-growing conference. What? Like, all these guys come together. They talk about growing techniques and, like, all this stuff about cigars. They, these know. guys learn how to roll cigars and all this stuff. Wow. Like, And that's another reason why I love live events. And, honestly, any live event. And I think I've touched on this before with, like, the airplane thing. Like, yeah. all these different worlds that... You know, I just get to learn a little bit about. I'm by so being intrigued a part of stuff. by this. I want to just see like the average attendee for this festival. I, I just I, I'm drawing pictures in my own head, and I'm they're like probably right. <laughs> <laughs> With all due respect, they're probably right. That's so cool. But uh, that's a big live event, and that's, yeah, it's a huge that's live event. Really cool. Yeah. So, wow. and especially with it being in Kentucky, we're taking like a long trip down. The planning is so important. You can't forget stuff. Yeah. Like I'm building that quote like I need to make sure every DMX jump is there. Yeah. I need we need to make sure every XLR jump is there. We're packing extras just in case stuff I goes bad. I couldn't imagine pulling up to Kentucky and not having, you know, uh, just a power cable for yeah, one like like you just miss something. You're and like, it's like crap. Yeah. Where well, now the heck am I getting now this? You've I'm lost in the middle of like, a tobacco field yeah. in literally nowhere Kentucky. <laughs> Yeah. And I need like a power con lead, and I'm like, oh crap. Yeah, it and did those not are the happen. things ahead, in production that that the people who are attending the event don't see. You nobody know, nobody ever mean? sees it. And yeah. so it's like people are like dying to get these things set up, and you know, if something like that's missed, that's catastrophic for the event. Yeah. Yep. Like, and then it just goes <laughs> to problem solving. It's like, right. all right, I gotta accept it. We yeah. don't have this power con lead. And setup what the heck slows am I doing? down significantly. Setup and, slows down. You, know, you gotta figure out how. You know, yeah. if it's not going to work, it's not going to work. So yeah. then you're going to have to figure out a new plan on site, uh-huh. make that work. So production but. people are the, probably the best at improv. Like they're really good at on the seat of their pants. Yeah, like honestly, you have to be like because that's when such those hiccups come and stuff. You know, they will. They literally always do. I don't know if I've ever been on an event where it's been like part. Like there's always like you can't at the end of the day, you can't plan for everything there's always gonna be right. something that happens it's like oh, okay that's the nature of the beast it's exactly you know? um but whether yeah. a bulb is out or you know. yep just something random yeah but you just got to be quick on your toes it's a huge asset to have when you're in this production world so right. yeah but yeah, wow. any more questions about like the well i i have so many more i yeah. think i think we have enough for like another episode i think honestly. i think we do have a part two coming up <laughs> yeah this is I like a good to. conversation yeah. i like this um live production is such a such a broad thing to talk about mm-hmm. and it, it it's you know it's kind of the heart of our podcast so we're it, just we're it just, honestly is yeah yeah we're just touching on exactly what we're passionate about yeah. and it's what, what we love to do excited to share with y'all yeah so let's save I, yeah, let's. I think this yeah. is a good s- time out. Time out. We're gonna take a time out, guys, and we'll, we'll come you back. back with a part two. Yeah, we have a big event coming up though uh, with Easter. Yes, we, we do. We mentioned it briefly last mm-hmm. week, um, but things are really cooking now. Yeah, we're we, coming up on it. We finished up programming this morning oh. at one thirty in the morning, um, which was fun. Yeah, <laughs> I've been up for a, such a oh, long time. <laughs> uh no it was really good we finished up programming in only two nights uh which was great uh 109 lighting cues wow uh, not including point cues so it's just solid cues um so yeah it's gonna be a fun show more details to come when we're walking through oh yeah we have tech rehearsal or yeah tech week is this monday um got to finish up practicals on set yeah um finish up just a few things hang projectors for video yeah um, because we have a massive psych behind the set pieces and stuff but yeah yeah, we'll definitely hit you guys and we're gonna have a really cool differing perspectives because i'm an actor on the stage in the midst of the production and tanner's up in the booth seeing the whole picture yeah so we'll be able to share what went wrong on the stage like we have special effects like um fog like rolling fog on the ground and stuff like that and like that's our fogger yeah (laughs) yeah um, the guy who runs it most years, I mean, there's some hiccups every time and it's every not time. on him, no. but it's like every time. Yep. <laughs> so like, I'm interested to see about that and we'll talk about that and, um, other things that went good and other things that went maybe not so good. Yeah. And you know? what, what would be interesting to see if like the problems that you encounter have any effect on 
me mm. and if any of the problems yeah. that i have have any effect on you that will be interesting because there was one time during the christmas rehearsal that there was a problem that affected both of us mm. the conflict of man <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna dive in it's gonna be great anyway guys can't wait for that episode yes but for now one last time Please, Please, at Worship Production Podcast on the Instagram, hit it up. Leave the questions. Give it a follow. Anything, Come you know. on. Come on, leave those questions. Yeah, we want to hear from you guys. Um, Our heart, we really want this thing to turn into maybe once every month. Maybe we don't have, we're not going to put a time on it, but we're going to have a bunch of questions that you guys ask and yes. we'll run through it. Yep. And it'll be just like driving through those things and we're going to yep. learn you're gonna learn it's gonna yeah. be great no we really do want to just help you guys out in any way that we can um but yeah i think that that wraps it up for this yes. this episode we did it come on it was good we'll get back on track um yeah, yeah. we love you guys we'll see you later catch you next week <laughs>